before we uh, go to a more open discussion, uh, we do have some uh, question coming in from the uh, from the uh, from the webinar, like the audience. Uh, one of the question is most uh, is directed to uh, Secretary Wong. Uh, this is uh, related to the um, uh, retrofit for energy savings. So one of the cons uh, one of the uh, inquir uh, inquiry is that. Uh, most of the time, uh, retrofitting buildings are quite expensive. And in some cases in Hong Kong, it's uh, much more difficult because of uh, diverse ownership. So uh, the, the question is like, um, if, uh, if a company would like to do retrofitting of energy uh, in an in a existing building to reduce carbon emission, uh, how can government and private collaboration help address some of this cost issue? Okay. I think the friends here or experts here can help to uh, address those uh, practical issues. But uh, in brief, I would like to respond that um, the government uh, is working with the industry, in particular the Hong Kong Green Council, and also within the government, the uh, EMSD, the Electrical and Mechanical Research Department, are working on the so-called ritual commissioning. Ritual commissioning is a kind of simply fire form of ritual, ritual fitting that would cause minimal disruption to the operations. But like tuning a vehicle or tuning a car, then you can get certain optimal uh, benefits in terms of cost and energy. So we published the guidelines and also uh, full certain demonstration projects, uh, including government projects and also private sector projects to demonstrate its workability. The ideas has been proving pretty good in terms of the results. So we are sharing the experience with Macau and also the Greater Bay Area cities uh, through uh, signing the memorandum so that we can export our expertise from Hong Kong to the Greater Bay areas. And I think on these technical questions, I think uh, friends here can also share. Uh, the, the other question is uh, related to low carbon concrete. So they, they are uh, basically, uh, the, the question is like whether it's mainly uh, focused on reducing the cement component of the concrete or the actual replacement of the cement for the low carbon concrete. Well, there's a lot of research uh, on this topic. Um, and of course, it's it, it's about uh, reducing the cement or replacing the cement in the <coughs> in different materials, so that it doesn't affect the durability of uh, the building and uh, the strengths of the building. And uh, and also, uh, I, I think the the question is is more global about design, uh, the way we design our building, the the quantity of concrete we are using, the norms, the regulation. There's, I think it's it's a yeah it's a global approach and with the the, the different uh, solution that we will find on each topic I think we, we can definitely reduce uh, the carbon emission of the concrete yeah yes. uh, there is uh, another uh, gentleman uh, again a question uh, for you uh, related to the uh, uh, to the annual kilowatts per hour per meter square energy consumption for the building state in the design. And they were curious, like, what is the exact energy consumption during actual operation? Uh, because you, you were targeting around 2,000 kilowatts uh, per hour per meter square. And no, actually, the, it's a power, it's 2,000 watt per person. Uh, so it's to design the uh, electrical equipment to fit this kind of, of uh, consumption. And, and, but I think we, we, with my friend of Schneider, we're very aligned because you said it was to reduce by three yeah. from 150 to 50 kilowatt. Yeah, so, so more or less is the same whether you're talking about consumption or power to, to design your installation. But basically the idea is yes, with new uh, design with new systems, uh, we could use less, a lot less energy, and uh, and it's it's uh, of course uh, all about the, the. You talked about the ventilation. I like the idea that the building is a problem and the building is becoming the solution for for the ventilation, for instance, and uh, but but also uh, for for the thermal transfers is really a lot 
to do in isolation and renovation, uh, I think to reduce the consumption basically of, of energy. But le let's, let's say that we, we basically need to reduce by three the consumption. Uh, there's uh, another question. I think it's more related to the uh, scheduling of the payment uh, by the tenant in buildings. So it said like the, since the HVAC costs for the tenant is relatively fixed as part of the rental costs, uh, in what way could it be incentivized for the tenant to actually reduce or save on the HVAC energy use? Uh, I think th this is too general. Okay. Uh, be, because uh, uh, currently, like the, the rental already cover, you know, the uh, the HVAC costs. So, uh, any idea, uh, Alexis? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, I guess the point there is whether. Uh, I guess the point there is whether we can encourage the resident or the occupant to support the. Uh, retrofitting or the renovation, because um, again, I talked to these uh, building management uh, company. They say, uh, as a company, they also want to do good to be green. But whenever they talk to the occupant, they they kind of say, okay, yes, the the concept is I pay for it already. Don't bother me. Okay. So the introduction of new things which they value, like health like air quality, and then uh, those are, I think, very important factor. And the measurement that display and let them see the change before your renovation, after your renovation, what is the difference? I think those will be very powerful point to encourage them. Yeah. So how to concretize the intangibles, correct? <laughs> so uh, I think there, there's another question coming in, uh, I think, directed to Hong. Uh, he said, like, um, so you, you did uh, put in, like, the behavior, uh, the, the occupant's behavior is a very important part on any design of a smart system. So the question here is, like, uh, what would be the uh, interaction between the, uh, between the, the, the smart, like, uh, uh, system within a building and that of the occupant behavioral training? I think uh, I've studied some economics. We call this the externality. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring the cost back to the person who bear it. So in the case of like uh, AC, if the tenant agreement is such that the cover, no matter how much you, you consume, then they have no incentive. I know some buildings have a fixed AC fee. Now, if you make the AC fee mm -hmm. a function of how much you consume, then that will change their behavior. Okay. So it's a very simple economics that we have to bring the smart, the cost and externality down to the level where it matters. So that is crucial. Like in the dorm example, uh, $50 can change so much. Sometimes it's hard to imagine because $50 to a student is a lot of money. $50 to the university is not so much money. So we have to think in terms of what, how it impacts the one who is deciding what to do and what to use. Uh one, one question, one last question uh, is addressed to uh, Alexis. Uh, that is uh, regarding the uh, air quality and the exposure. Uh, so the question is like, uh, since you stress that the government have 18 uh, stations and most of the time people are actually indoor, uh, how do you extrapolate the, uh, the actual air quality? Well, uh, first of all, we have a very sophisticated model uh, going into estimating what is the air quality outside their building. That part, we have done a lot of research on that. And then in the last two, three years, we re literally go to 200 sites, uh, trying to look at the ventilation type, whether they open the window, what is the pattern. So uh, in each of this, we study two weeks inside and outside the uh, type of uh, premise, trying to understand the relationship. If we understand what is outside, how do we estimate the inside? So uh, that's why we would also be able to tell people, okay, whether you open the window, open AC, with this type of information, we can estimate how much you have and also give them some indication uh, in pollution episode, what you can do. 
So those are all embedded in the, uh, I, I would say from measurement mm -hmm. to infer. Okay, thank you very much. So Kelvin. Actually, I would like to address back to the question about retro commissioning. What I want to say is, um, I would like to shift the focus a bit to the uh, monitoring uh, phase of the equipment. And um, one thing about the philosophy is right now, uh, we are doing some predictive maintenance. In the past, we are doing reactive maintenance, so we don't Take, uh, take care of the equipment, okay? We just leave it there. If it's broken down, then we replace. Okay, yeah, you just replace it. The equipment cost is not very much, but the impact could be very costly. And that's why we change it, advance it to um, preventive maintenance. We do maintenance regularly, try to avoid some breakdowns, some outage. Yeah, it's good. But right now with the advance of digital technologies, we can do the, um, uh, predictive maintenance, okay? We use technologies to predict when it will break down, okay? Try to see the symptoms, and that's the time, and also the cause will be the least, actually, yeah. So that's why we do the predictive maintenance, and it will tell you the right time to do the retrofitting, yeah, okay? Uh, and I think one last question is uh, addressed to HKUSD in particular. He said uh, the three million kilowatts per hour uh, per year to be generated by uh, our solar array, what percentage of the total campus electrical consumption is that? That's a very good question. I don't have the figure. Maybe uh, Davis will know he's listening. 10 percent, 20 percent. <laughs> I, I, my, my sense of it is uh, maybe 10. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not much. Okay. But still, it will it bring is substantial in, in terms exactly, of uh, CO2 exactly. reduction. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, like uh, we need to give uh, ground to the next round table, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So, so, thank you.